Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I just sort of ran through a lot of my random thoughts about the Ryzen 1800X and the Ryzen platform in general that have been accumulating in my brain for the past two months since I've had my processor. One of the great things about running your own YouTube channel, especially once you get past a relatively small amount of subscribers, is that you can sort of watch the comment section banter back and forth with itself, and you sort of have a way of guiding the conversation with the video content that you're producing. So with that in mind, I want to go through some of the comments from that last video. And by the way, I'll put a card up here in case you want to go back and look at the, both the video and the comments because, well, it's all good. This one says, I seriously don't get out of everything productivity related the streaming while gaming part is mentioned as the one positive. With the right quick sync settings, any CPU Ivy bridge and later can give a good enough image with 0% overhead. Outside of that, Ryzen is still awesome at everything for its price. Any of those CPUs will last you a lot of miles on the cheap. He goes on to mention how a quick sync can be set up to be lossless quality um, with a hardware encoder provided by Intel. And that's sort of not the opinion of most reviewers. In fact, Linus did a phenomenal review sort of testing of the 1800X and its uh, ability to encode while gaming versus the Intel QuickSync as well as the NVIDIA uh, NVENC and uh, Ryzen was better. So um, I'll card that up as well for you to watch that because that's a great sort of overview of the QuickSync versus uh H.264 encoding on Ryzen. If your mommy and daddy can't afford to buy a new gaming system every six months, then get the 1600X or the 1800X and the best quality MOBO you can find. If they can, then you should already own a 7700K. There's no such thing as future proofing, but in five plus years when Ryzen chips are considered obsolete, you stick on a liquid cooler and overclock the nuts off it. That may just give you another few years before GPU upgrades are pointless and you have to drop another 2500 for a new system. Wow, there's, there's really just a whole lot going on there. First and foremost, Ryzen, even on relatively modest cooling, seems to about hit the same clock speeds regardless of which chip you get. They almost always fall between that 3.8 and 4.0 or maybe 4.1 range. Although somebody else in the comments did mention that they hit 4.2 with theirs, and if you can, then wow, good for you, you hit the silicon lottery. The other issue is that I don't see the purpose of building a $2,500 uh, PC anyways. Even if you buy the 1800X, which is a $500 CPU and a 1080 Ti, you really shouldn't be running into that $2,500 price point unless you're adding a lot of things like storage, a fancy case, um, overpowered PSU, that sort of thing. Do you mind test CSGO with your Ryzen, please? I can't decide which to get, 7700K or 1800X. This is actually one that's been requested more than once, and I'll tell you what, guys. If I get a significant amount of likes on this video, we'll call it uh, 200 likes on this video because that's pretty up there for my channel. If I get those 200 likes on this video, then I will go out, purchase CSGO, which I do not own, I might add, and I will actually test that CSGO while streaming on the 1800X with a variety of different OBS settings in a similar way that I tested uh, GTA 5 on the 1600. So if you want to see that, 200 likes, and I'll do it. I'm glad AMD is back. I would like to build at least a R5 1600 with the best GPU on the market, maybe a 1080 Ti or Vega. Yeah, so as far as gaming goes, the 1600 is probably the best value for your money um, in the Ryzen lineup, and pairing it with a really high-end GPU, while maybe not giving you quite the returns that the uh, i7-7700K from Intel will give you, uh, you'll still see great performance from your GPU and your CPU although slowing it down a little bit in certain scenarios still isn't gonna be a gigantic drain on your system like the older processors like the FX 8350 might have been. So is R7 good alternative for 7700K for gaming build or should I stick for, with Intel? I always go back to this. If you are just gaming and you're not doing multi-threaded applications very often, you're not streaming, those sort of things, then you're probably better off just spending the money on a 7700K because you'll get a slightly higher FPS out of the 7700K than you probably will the R7 processors. That being said, the R7 is a bit of a jack of all trades, whereas the i7s get a little bit hamstrung if they get into some heavily multi-threaded applications. Uh, so it's, it's really up to your use case. However, they are 
are both really good at gaming. Even if you decide that you just want to get the AMD processor because you just want to support the underdog, you're not going to take a big performance hit by doing that instead of the 7700K. So really, it's, it's, you know, it, it's almost a toss up. And last but not least, getting the Ryzen 1700 is better in most cases because if you don't need now, you might need it in the future even though AM4 is still new. AMD might release 12 core AM4, same price in two to five years and you can just bought it. I just don't think anyone will be disappointed with R7 or Ryzen 7. And you know, that is the overall opinion I have. Uh, whether you're an 1800X person, a 1700X or a 1700, uh, compared to Intel's pricing uh, pre-Ryzen, I don't think anybody is disappointed with those processors. Maybe on the gaming front, there was a little bit of disappointment when they launched, but even so, they're still really solid gaming processors. They just don't quite match up to the top end Intel ones in that arena, but in a lot of other ways, the R7s are just a better overall value because you get way more threads on way more cores, for way less money and you get essentially a processor that is a great jack of all trades that gives you uh, multitasking abilities that just aren't there with Intel's processors. So consumers are definitely winning with the R7 lineup. So I thought it was really cool to see what you guys thought of Ryzen, at least so far, both the R5s, the R7s, um, and seeing all those links from that video for PC Part Picker list was really cool to check out everybody's uh, different ideas on what to build for their next computer or computers that you had already put together. So if you like this content and you like this sort of style of checking out the comment section, give me a like, share, subscribe down below. Also comment down below and tell me if you didn't put in your thoughts last time, tell me what your Ryzen thoughts are because I am known to uh, interact in the comments from time to time. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Hoosier Hardware for both. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel over here. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.